Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. Parentheses Adika. Parentheses Adika. And we are recording a podcast in person again. We did it. The podcast so nice, we recorded it in person twice. <laughs> That's it. No more. No more after this. Oh, what about thrice? <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't seen the previous episode, um, we're doing this in person now. Jordan's here in person. If you haven't been caught up on your sad boys lore. Yeah. Have you read the manga or you're, you're only watching yeah, the I'm kind of, I'm, I'm like, a am on the, I'm on the dub and it's a little bit behind the, the sub, translations so. a little wonky. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of, uh, terms that just don't translate, you know, right. that's bio is like, no, there's no English. Equivalent right. There's there. no English equivalent. You know, when we're, uh, to welcome to sad boys, believe it, believe it. <laughs> so we are fiddling around with our setup. We're, we're adding a little bit of production. We're trying to do, We're trying to do the damn thing, podcast style. And part of that is we have more cameras, as you can notice. (laughs) One new camera every episode. Every episode. Um, And eventually we'll be able to do the like thing from the Matrix where we... Oh, a full throw. We do do, like the (laughs) slow-mo, like with a bunch of uh, of cameras. Well, eventually we will be able to bankrupt the business by buying cameras. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of my goal actually as a creator to just spend all of the money... (laughs) It, not on salaries, uh, yeah. but on cameras. That would be awesome. Bury me in my pile of cameras. Speaking of salaries, we're joined today by our new um, producer, Jacob. Hi. Bear with us as we navigate our evolution of the podcast. We eventually want to have a more consistent place to film, but it's not ready yet. So we're in my living room. It's been like really... You know, sometimes when the, uh, something has a little too much momentum or change or in a positive way. Yeah, like our podcast that has always had too much momentum for the well, entire five it's, years that we've it's been recording like the, it. Yeah, it's this weird, we've been building a foundation for so long. And then, you know, the San Andreas fault has wobbled and collapsed the house yeah. of cards of the show again and again. And we're trying to build it and build it and build it. Then I'm out of the country and then yeah. I'm back and but I moved fully. Now that all the things are in place, I still have this weird doubt. In oh my yeah, mind, for sure. Where it's like, well, part of it is that I spent so long visiting before I moved back. Moved yeah. back. I'm like, how many episodes can we get in before I go again? Right. Which is not the case. Yeah. I don't have to do that. Um, um, I am going to dip back to the uh, UK briefly in like a month and a half. Oh, for I am the Invisalign bastard. Oh yeah, he's an Invisalign boy. You can't see him like jo- you can't see his teeth like John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what Invisalign does. It pulls him out. It pulls him out. Yeah, you he's, just see like gum. You see that shit about some of the Invisalign alts, like like resulting in people losing teeth. What? Well, there's so there's a bunch of you know braces alternatives. Mm-hmm. Mostly, oh, the mm. alternative to Invisalign, so mm. not like Invisalign proper or regular braces, but like, yeah, like a bite in vaso line or yeah. in vaso lean, <laughs> yeah, which is just some pliers, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to move them into yeah. the right place. Um, I mean, you probably had the same experience with your brace, it's very cathartic to like look in the mirror now and then. it's like working out, like every now oh, and then you just see a slight change, and like it, it was weird. Uh, and I think that for me, it was extra strange because I had the like brackets strapped Mm. to my teeth for the entire time. So I could never get used to what it would look like. And there's a lot of morbid curiosity where I would like try to Photoshop the braces off of my teeth to see what they were like looking like. And that became too difficult. Um, Do you see yourself now when you imagine your visage, do you see yourself with the gap? Or it's you've officially. Oh, I like forgot. I like don't recognize myself like from the past. With it, well, I mean, also you've been on camera for ten thousand more hours since getting rid of the gap. Than, right. Yeah. Every once in a while, I will get a comment about the gap. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, I got we're talking about the thigh gap. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the thigh gap. <laughs> I'm I'm an itty bitty thigh man. <laughs> so when I want to say now, I've had the braces off for like. Maybe two years, it, almost two years. Yeah, it was uh, in the middle of the early. Yeah, it was like, in the middle of the pandemic yeah. that I got them off. But um, I want to say like 2018 to 2020 is when I had braces. Yeah, because it was before you moved there. And I was doing content and I was really self conscious about that. Um, but I did content before I got braces. And then I was like, I'm going to get braces because I want them for my life. But it is going to tank all of my content aspirations because no one will follow a creator with braces. Turns out I was 
unfortunately incorrect. And <laughs> then um, had the braces for two years while doing content and then got them off and continued doing content. So the weird thing that happens now is that people will be binging my videos mm, yeah. and they'll like, it'll happen very quickly to them that my teeth change and they're like, wait, go back. I, I missed the gap. And I'm like, well, that's not a thing that you should really say to someone Yeah. because what am I supposed to do? Like, go back. Yeah. Can I, actually, you guys got any pliers back there? We could just like kind of crank this one back in there. Yeah, it's no, like I have cold face uh, fat or whatever. Yeah, it's one of those exactly. It's the buckle fat so removal long. for my, yeah. yeah gap, buckle gap removal. I have a, um, internal retainer permanently keeping my gap close. Uh, not a big one, literally just between my two front teeth and uh, bottom four teeth. Like a wire? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Your tongue got used to the, I, at the beginning, I assume there's like a, Oh yeah. And, and I just got my teeth cleaned. Welcome to teeth boys. Um, yeah. I just got my teeth cleaned and there's, a, I have a wire below and I, can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, that's another, it, it's silly at this point in our lives to harp on how many weird similarities there are, but the fact that we also both ended up getting adult braces and had like self-consciousness about effectively the same part of our mouths. Cause mine were, it was the top teeth for me. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. But now we both look fucking phenomenal. <laughs> We've been, I know it's, it's kind of crazy. And we the, do it at like several different angles. The glow up, the glow cut. up is real. Cut, 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 camera A, B, A, B, C. Cut. So I guess the moral of the story is if anyone out there thinks it's too late for them to get braces, it's not. Mm. Um, for me, it was, and I think maybe you as well, you know, braces aren't cheap. And I didn't like get them as a kid because I couldn't afford them. And yeah. even with insurance and stuff, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. And so as an adult, I was finally like, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do this. And you do feel like a teenager for a <laughs> bit, but you do feel like you're perpetually late to like biology class. But at the end of the day, it's rewarding and definitely something that I would do again if I, you know, if I could choose. It does feel genuinely a lot like working out where it's like this small, it's like a small, takes a little motivation to get going every now and then you get frustrated. Sometimes you don't see the progress you want to see, but then with a long enough timeline, I wish I'd started doing progress picks mm. with the teeth. Cause I, I yeah. now the closest I had was the Patreon uh, career website photo from 2015. Right. Yeah. I would. Cause all the content's at this angle too. Yeah. So I don't get to, same as this effectively. Right. I don't get to, uh, this is the monkey tooth, which I kind of partially did because I was trying to hide the monkey tooth. Yeah. Maybe right. Not. You're like, <laughs> you're like dream where you only show yourself from one angle. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing it. I had only ever seen the photo and then I saw the clip a couple of days ago and I laughed out loud. I look, He's a fine looking dude. I'm not trying oh, to criticize I would, him. I have met Dream in person. Nicest dude. Beautiful man. It's just such an odd It was just like choice. a, it was just a funny thing. And I yeah. think that that's like, I think that that's an okay observation to make. Look, well, we've actually decided. Just that his face is only in one angle the entire, the entirety of the video. I just want to give a shout out and officially say, fan of the show, Dream. We think you're a good looking guy. So you yeah. can actually feel good now. People were asking us to weigh in on Dreamgate for a while. Um, dream face, <laughs> the dream face reveal. And and now here we are in the year 2023 to, to go ahead and say that Dream is a looker. He's a good looking man. Keep and he's up, very tall. Really? Yeah, he's. I think he's about as tall, if not taller than you. <laughs> I know, it's, a, it's kind of disgusting. For now, dude. Um, there is a type of like, let's play white guy that is so long. You know yeah, what I mean? There's the another lankiest. guy from the, oh, Rambu is also like very tall. Oh, isn't, uh, um, uh, uh, Rhymestyle's tall, no? Oh, I haven't seen Rhymestyle in person. Mm. And then also Eret, shout out to Eret. We should get Alistair on the podcast um, as well, who is a, t a tall, beautiful man as well, or What's tall, beautiful person. Let's be careful about getting people taller than me. I, I, mm, I really, I really just want to keep you in your place. Let's get, let's get Noel. Okay, <laughs> okay we'll yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll make us feel better. Noel, uh, please come on the podcast and make Jordan feel tall. Um, I have a weird thing about myself that I've noticed, and I was thinking about it today, and I tweeted about it, and I want to get your take, and I want to get the audience's take. I killed a man. <laughs> no, and, uh, That's a weird thing about Yeah, me. <laughs> weird thing I was thinking about in the car today with a man in my trunk. Um, so I 
like eating in my car. I like sitting in my car and I like eating in my car and it feels weird, but it's a private, quiet space that is all my own and I feel safe there. Because uh, The reason I thought about this is that I went and got a coffee and a donut mm-hmm. from a, a location, um, in a cafe establishment. And the thing I was excited to do was sit in the parking lot in my car and eat the donut and drink the coffee and like watch a YouTube video. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Did you get in the car where you parked it or did you take it to a scenic location? No, I literally got into it where I parked it, but I considered going elsewhere, but the other option that I was thinking about was just sometimes I sit a little bit too long in my garage after I park. Mm -hmm. And so I was, um, you can't figure out how to get out of the car. Yeah. I was like, I think it's a little sadder if I'm eating in my garage. So at the very least, um, at at the very least I will sit. It was in this open air, like Mm. on the dirt I was parked. So I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, we also, we're late drivers. So I think we maybe have a little bit more romance for cars than, uh, in, than, in, yeah. In contrast to baby drivers, we are, yeah, like we are elderly, uh, drivers. elderly drivers. Yeah. I just got my license last year. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I am currently standing on my U S license. This is another similarity. God, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, can we talk again about how people mix us up? Crazy that it's happening still. It doesn't stop happening. We, uh, I don't even remember where we are. I'm not going to, you know, call anyone out it's not their fault it's like the third time we met them or something like that but we were (laughs) both at a party a few weeks ago it was like a sitcom moment yeah i literally you walk through the door just in time to hear him go you're jarvis right it would have been a great bit if you turned around and left then we played the curb theme um i'm gonna see if dipper is gonna chill i think he can contribute something interesting to the show uh, he's got to stop saying the bad words. Yeah, that's true. He probably yeah. get us demonetized. So it's a lot of old timey slurs. Yeah, you know? weird ones. Yeah, you got, someone called someone a gabagool, which yeah, I, I know is a sandwich meat. So I don't know um, if that's like an Italian one. And he he, he called me a he, he called me a two legger, <laughs> and I was like, what does that even mean? It's like okay, a true, I guess. Yeah, which is like I know? guess a slur for dogs yeah. <laughs> they, they would use against their like humans. Muggle. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like mud blood, <laughs> which is <laughs> so. So bad. I we, it is actually kind of fucked up how evil Mudblood sounds. Yeah, it's way worse than the N word. Yeah, okay, well, it sounds like a, a biracial slur. Is being a wizard a race thing? Well, it's weird, right? Because it's like, like a species. It's like, well, not, not to speculate, but it, it almost gives the impression that uh, J.K. Rowling is a person, maybe of. Uh, a certain background with no exposure to people of color mm, and has uh, come to I don't them. know what you would. What would give you that impression? Well, no, she loves uh, diversity or whatever. And actually, yeah. Dumbledore is gay. Yeah. So my question is, um, <laughs> my question is, is Harry Potter like logic or is he more <laughs> like a liker? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of, yeah. You see yeah, those like TikTok <laughs> memes where it's like, like skin, dark skin, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm just like, yeah, is it like a species thing where like, <laughs> where like muggles and wizards can like crossbreed or is it racial? These are the questions that we really it's, need to get to the bottom of. That would be great if it's just because he never specifies if it's just implied in the book that all the wizards are black people. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, um, check Pottermore actually. What was the thing you were telling me about the video essay you're watching where they, they reread recently all the Harry Potter books and they talked about how much time was spent descri- like describing how like fat someone was. Oh, it is, yeah, uh, Sean did so a video. Oh, hold on. Uh, uh, trigger warning for fat phobia. Mm, yeah, um, which, and J.K. Rowling in general. And J.K. Rowling in general. I would say it is one of the, I think J.K. <laughs> JK Rowling can almost smoke screen all of her, her other transgressions because of the worst thing that she now does. Yeah. But uh, yeah, even at the time, those books are really mean spirited. <laughs> They're very like uh, unattraction coded or whatever. Mm. It's like, if like you're people a villain, are, uh, who people who are ugly are bad. And she treats, you know, like any, anything that deviates from her interpretation of attractive as evil. So like Dudley, 
mm-hmm. is is and she defends this by saying like ah yeah but the Weasley mother she's you know plump or whatever it's like okay but you used a very charitable term in her case and then yeah it's almost like she said she's one of the good ones yeah, <laughs> yeah. like she's a model minority kind yeah, of yeah 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 and that she's like delightfully plump but literally like, which is the only like polite coded word for describe <laughs> I feel like that is a word that I remember in that book but everyone else is just like fat slimy oily <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean oh, ovular yeah. I recommend the Sean video in general. Um, it's very like very critical of J.K. Rowling, and even if some of her her writing can be triggering, though you know taste may vary. So so it is it, it can be quite cathartic to see her being called out in such a like because this uh, Sean is one of my favorite YouTube channels. It's just goes by Sean S H A U N and is all like sporadic H bomber guy levels of of uploads and effort. Um, right. Great listens because they're usually just static images of his little skull avatar. Right. Um, he sounds like me if I was super British. Mm. If I went to uh, kind of Super Saiyan 2 where the lightning was around me and I was British. You know mm. what I mean? I got it. Uh, yeah, highly recommend. But that video is is very cathartic. He's also like a major trans ally, which is refreshing for the British. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. They're like they're like Olympic transphobes. I I had bros. no idea. Yeah, <laughs> the oi bros. They're really putting the. I had, I've had to have like genuine, very. I think my extended family. I've had like very minimal contact with most of my life, but we've reconnected more now. Um, my aunt especially because she's been kind of helping me care for my mum and stuff like that. And she is, uh, she's great and fairly progressive. But it did reveal to me that the extended family is like, little, maybe a little con? Aye. A little, or, you know, a little bit. Um, they wouldn't call themselves Tories, but the, like, I don't know, the ideology is like indistinguishable. Right. Uh, they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Beastie Boy. Mr. Beastie Boy. Oh, yeah. The, the, f- how many members of the Beastie Boys are there? Three? Is yeah. he the fourth Beastie Boy? He's the fourth secret Beastie Boy. So, young Jimmy, young Jimbo, Mr. Beast, is God himself, the largest YouTuber. I don't think he needs a, ex- he, he needs an introduction. Yeah, I think he's doing okay. Yeah. His, his, his cloud, he is cloud based software. He is, he is cl- cloud. You've heard of cloud based software, but he's cloud based. He's cloud based. Hardware. I, I think he's, uh, I mean, what his general high concept is? Yeah, hey, we did this thing. Yeah, he does like big stunts. Um, there's like a philanthropy bent. There's also a sort of just giving a lot of money away in general. There's mm-hmm. like a financial bent because it's like his initial, his first video was he gave away ten thousand dollars that he got from a brand deal, and then he just kept sort of repeating that process. And, and, it, and it kept getting bigger and bigger. It's kind of like where somebody takes like a pin and they trade it for a house, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> you know, except for he traded it for uh, a billion dollar identity. He's yeah. a billion dollar man. Having an industry, basically. Yeah, billion yeah. dollar industries because he's got he's got everything. He's got the content. He's got the philanthropy. He's got the restaurants. A burger. Yeah, he's got um, Mr. Beast bars, the chocolate. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's all over the place. But he uh, in in the spirit of uh, philanthropic content, uh, a couple of weeks ago at time of recording, I think a week ago or so, he released a video in which he pays for a thousand people across the globe, a couple hundred in the U.S. I believe, and then kind of spread out across the globe. A, right. a good click in Africa as well. He pays for a production wise on the side of healthcare very cheap cataract surgery mm-hmm. a 10 minute cataract surgery to effectively cure blindness for a thousand people or extreme, at least extremely limited vision um very quick surgery very simple and in in essence what it was to a lot of people my ourselves included is a critique of the lack of healthcare support globally, yeah. either medical availability in some countries and regions, right, and then more like critically in the U.S., it's all entirely available but completely unaffordable. Right, because you're watching that and you're going, "Wait, there's how many people?" Like the fact that he chose a thousand is a huge number. Yeah, and the, uh, the procedure is, I believe, in the realm of about three thousand dollars an eye, up to seventy five hundred dollars an eye. Okay, so completely 
inaccessible to, to huge swaths of people. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know how, you know, insurance plays into that and not everybody has access to insurance. And in America, especially a lot of times insurance is connected to your job. So it's just a whole, there's a lot of sort of, um, critique that can be made of the healthcare systems in America and elsewhere. But Mr. Beast video being Mr. Beast video, that's not the focus of the video. The focus of the video is the people receiving their surgery and having this like, oh, wow, inspirational experience of, of like being able to see. And that's the thing that makes the content engaging. Yeah. And he's, you know, is pretty outwardly or has in the past been pretty uh, supportive of like base productive capitalism. He likes that. Mm-hmm. He he is a, a stan and a fan of, has been like positive feedback towards Elon Musk in occasion. and a, Yeah, he's a Steve Jobs fan. Which is all, is you know, neither here nor there, but it yeah. is, it's indicative of his, um, you know, uh, engagement with capitalism and endorsement, or at mm-hmm. least endorsement to a generation of people that are watching his content non-critically. Yeah, um, and I also, I just don't think he's like a particularly political guy, so I don't think... I think he sees the world the way he sees it intuitively. I think, and I do think, I think the philanthropic element though, it is, you know, this this video is, uh, I'm sure like financially a net positive for the business, especially as far as exposure and growth goes. Yeah. It, I I do think it's sincere. I don't, I don't think it was a a cynical thing. And even if it's the most cynical thing in the world, I'm glad a thousand people can see. Right. I think um, it's interesting because Mr. Beast... Oh, but we just said the critique that people are yeah. making is similar to ours in that there is right. this systemic problem that should maybe be more of focus of the content. Right. A la, hey, it's crazy that I need to do this. Yeah. Which does not come up. But it, well, I think that, so there was a big viral Twitter thread where someone said, hey, this feels demonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that that, And where that's coming from, where that person is coming from is this rich person is doing this good thing. It feels like it's making these like less fortunate people like dance for healthcare and stuff. And it's like rubbing them the wrong way. And I think that that is like, I I, I don't want to invalidate that way of reading the situation, um, but it is born out of the systemic inequalities and the like healthcare system as it exists and like the types of people that are like prevented their paywalled from, from care that is a necessity essentially Mm -hmm. to like, to live life to their fullest potential because it seems silly to be like, like the literally it's like a video game where it's like, you don't have access to seeing, right? Like, and it's like, that's, and, so there's and, and a level the re- cap. The, there's a level cap, and it's like the and the reason is you've got a microtransaction, which mm-hmm. is the, the inexpensive healthcare thing, and that feels like a problem, and it is a problem. Um, there are people who disagree with any sort of performative giving and performative sure. charity. I think uh, cosmetic altruism, right? Yeah, Meeting where it's like, like it's that. being done in public and yeah. it's being done for content, but you know. Like you said, um, it, it's a net positive for the business. I think that Mr. Beast would argue that it like loses a lot of money for him to do, which I don't deny. But when we say net positive, we mean the flywheel of Mr. Beast's thing. It's like he loses money on every video, but it allows him to keep the flywheel going and keep keep growing. So it's like a loss leader. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's huge archive earnings right these these videos yeah. don't tend to slow down that much yeah but it, you know he's he seems like the type and i will take him at face value here that like if he says he's losing money on videos i don't um have a reason to say that that's false but also if he was losing money on everything he was doing then he wouldn't be able to run his business so clearly something is mm-hmm. like sure. keeping keeping things uh running but yeah i mean long story short i think we're in we're aligned on the fact that like i mean what's demonic about it most broadly is it's a shame that there's not more of an active critique of capitalism which to his credit he later did acknowledge in he a did. very apolitical way that I, I, you know yeah i, I think I, it's a shame sometimes when such significant platforms don't you know this is, this is a weird comparison to make but it's almost a uh 
Obama lib complacency mm -hmm. era type thing where the Obama administration was celebrated for being so progressive, but ultimately couldn't have been more compromisey or more mm -hmm. acknowledgement based, mm -hmm. more just, yeah, here yeah. are the things we believe. I mean, of course, fully socialized healthcare is crazy it, and it, it, it wouldn't yeah. work, but we, we can give you this rebranded equivalent that uh, still fits within it. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, it, and it's, uh, I don't like know the answers obviously. And like, yeah, for, for example, like Obamacare is something that, you know, all the like Republicans and stuff demonize and treat it as like the worst thing in the world. And then the second that they tried to get rid of it, uh, couldn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because it, of how popular it was. And I, I do think it's like, in, I think it's a valid criticism of Mr. Beast to ask more of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is, he is at the, he is at the size and scale that he has the resources to, um, to cater to like, um, to have more of a, a, of a messaging in it. Even if he wanted to keep it apolitical, he could have included that statement that he made on Twitter in the video itself. It like it's in the subtext of the video, but also, you know, I think that it's fair for more for people to ask for more um, from him I mean, because you with know, great power, great responsibility. Exactly. Right? Um, and with imbalanced power, like you, yeah. no, no portion of the population should be able to have such a disproportional amount of wealth. Yeah. It's wild. I noticed too, the people that would do it still after he acknowledged it, still defending usually just have a lack of imagination are unable to like conceive. They treat charity like this innate innate thing that exists in nature as though like the right. capitalist system is just born in our bones as opposed to, you know, I'd say this partially as, you know, a filthy immigrant myself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You are. I, you know, I've socialized healthcare majority of my life. Yeah. Um, I don't remember when I was younger. I remember I, I, I had a lot of uh, health issues when I was a kid and we used to go to the hospital a lot, but I know for a fact that it wasn't, we were poor for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I know that that was not an issue. And now, you know, my family, you know, without maybe one day I'll go into it, but like we receive, uh, uh, my family has support. My mom has support. There we go. I'll just say it. My, mm -hmm. my mom has 24 hour support care workers and we don't pay a penny for yeah. that. We, we, her situ situation is very unique still. Like the majority of people wouldn't get that. Right. They'd likely be in a facility. Mm -hmm. But we, I pay her rent and, and it, general expenses. And then the support workers are there um, from a private business, completely financed exclusively by the council and the NHS by extension. And that is a, I don't want to speak with some kind of authority like I have the legislative power, but all I know for a fact is that it is a viable option. Right. It, yeah. Regardless um, of like what has to be re-engineered or changed, it is... Um, I'd be curious to see how it affects his content in the future. I, 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 yeah, I'm curious, curious because I think it performed well for him, so it could mean that he's going to like pivot his direction more towards stuff like this. I think that when it comes to the critique of him and just like... I, I, Twitter is like a very loud place where um, the most extreme takes um, win in terms of win the most points in the forms of like likes and sure. engagement. And I do think that for me, fundamentally, a lot of the um, critique after he kind of came out and said, you know, hey, like, I, I don't think it should be this way. I don't understand why it has to be this way um, is just people having different politics and I do think that that's like, you know, it's like if you see uh, capitalism as a impossible system to work, a system that could never work, and, and you prefer, um, you know, a different system, then that is valid. But it's also like you, the energy that people come at people who don't like who, who kind of are apolitical and not thinking so deeply about it as if they're like the most malicious actors, mm. you know, in the world and they're engaging in like poverty tourism because of, you know, all they care about is the profit motive and yada, yada, yada. It's like, I mean, I think that we could do more critiques of capitalism without the like personal attacks. 
or, yeah, the, sure. or the personal sort of trying to assume the motive of, of somebody who exists within like a capitalist system. And plenty of the people defending it are, it, uh, it, it is, it is bad faith in, in plenty of cases. And it's only there for the, you know, they are there for the conflict in the same way, the people defending the construction of capitalism and Mr. Beast production and, and they Elon Musk people, right? Mm-hmm. The Venn diagram is a circle. Yeah. But you know, at the same time, I think there are plenty of people that literally just don't have the imagination for it. They like yeah. the, it, that so ingrained, which is just how systemic things work. They are already the case. So I want, I want you to imagine a color you've never seen before. But yeah. It's intimidating and overwhelming and, Probably comforting. What are the what are the, the monic elements? I will say is the thumbnail. The oh, vibes thumbnail, are off. Thumbnail vibes <laughs> vibes are off. It is here. It is on screen. It is a. It is Mr. Beast doing his this smile, you know, yeah. and then a crying child. <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, yeah. Which is a very funny thing Agree. to ask. I also like. I think that Mr. Beast is like uh, at his stature is. Um, entirely worthy of criticism and we should continue to criticize the um institution but of, of mr beast but i think that you know as something that we have learned sort of in our professional backgrounds and in, in, in like giving feedback it's a lot more effective to focus on like the action and the effect than like assume someone's personal intent because the intent yeah. like doesn't matter and so it's like if you you know um hurt me in some way with your actions, I, uh, it's more, it's less constructive for me to say, Hey, you suck. Or like, Hey, you hate me than mm-hmm. to say like, Hey, when you did X, it made me feel Y, you know? Yeah. Especially when the relationship is limited to, you know, if it's only a coworker and not someone you're that close to who the motivation doesn't matter as much as their actions, you know, Mr. Beast, none of the critiques I would make of Mr. Beast have anything to do with my relationship. Don't know the man. Don't know the man. Don't know the man. I the, did. I have met the man, though. The, the myth, the legend. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh, I did. And he doesn't remember this, I know, uh, because he later told someone that he uh, hasn't met me in person. But in fact, in 2019, we were at an event together and I did uh, teach him to roller skate. That's a little bit of a, a fun fact. The, that, well, this is like a teaser trailer. Yeah, this was like, it was like what, me what? and Zach from the Try Guys at this like YouTube summit um, at a roller rink. I still have the YouTube branded roller skates from this event. Of course. Uh, and Signed um, by Mr. Beast. Yeah, and, and I we were like on either side of Mr. Beast helping him roller skate in a roller rink. So mm. this is like, it's almost like a setup for in like a disaster movie where it's a flashback and Jimmy is learning to skate. And then it's like, we need to get away from the earthquake. And he's like, I have just the move. Uh, Oh, but I do want to acknowledge that it is very respectable that he he had that initial, oh, 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 I see. Oh, like a defensive initial reaction Mm -hmm. to then review the feedback and have another reaction that like was very admirable. I'm taking on the feedback. Yeah. That's just a rare thing for human beings to do. I mean, the guy is obsessed with learning. So I do think that like him learning about the socioeconomic, you know, uh, conditions that like cause people to react to his content in a certain way. I don't think it's like going to take him that long to understand that, yeah. but I, and maybe some people would criticize us for giving him too much credit or like not going hard enough on him. But I'm also like, he's pretty young. He's like 24. And I'm, and I, I genuinely did not think about the world at large um, until I was like 25. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that that's a weird thing about our jobs is that we have all of this reach and influence. Um, but we shouldn't <laughs> we, we, like, there's nothing that like makes us uh, like more entitled to someone's attention than, than anyone else. We just have it and we need to be responsible with it. Mm-hmm. Or we, we want to be responsible with it because of who we are as people. Well, like Peter Parker didn't make the spider. You know yeah. what I mean? It just found him and then like, oh, unfortunately. But it's not against the law to like not be a good influence. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, very worthy critique. I made the same. The demonic element is certainly there. And even on that thread, the the guy making that critique was like, this is just more about how uncomfortable it is or how shaky it makes me feel. But yeah. I don't know. I'll just, I really just wanted to give a, a endorsement of his, 
I wouldn't even, it's not an apology, uh, an endorsement of his acknowledgement. Well, it's like credit where credit is due. Yeah. The person making that thread was like, this is just how I feel. Um, it's not that deep, I think, or mm-hmm. something like that. And it is interesting that some people are like, well, you shouldn't have even said anything if you were going to come at him like this. And I'm like, well, this person kind of identified a very unformed thought. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they tweeted like this, I can't explain why, but it makes me feel weird. And then the discussion was ex- like people trying to explain why, but other people are like, you shouldn't have even said this. And I'm like, I think that it's Twitter and I think you're allowed to just say things. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of got, we kind of got a little deep on, uh, some topics. So I didn't get a chance to ask you, Jordan, how are you doing? How, how is your week? Uh, weird. Okay. Odd. Um, I'm, I'm, it's very weird being back. Um, yeah. Not in the sense that the, the, it's bad at all. Right. It's, it's amazing. Like everything is so much easier mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when you, when you're around people and it's warmer and there's, <laughs> you have some like establishment and feel like there's a future that's more than, you know, the, four to six month leases I've been taking on and then moving. Right. And moving. No, literally. Building out the space has been really nice. Um, living with Ethan is great. Uh, we get along well. Um, he's a good roommate. We've enjoyed both furnishing it because he was, he's been like kind of an equally temporary, like when am I moving? What's going right. on? Right. Uh, but at the same time, it's, I'm not past the fear of visa stuff falling apart again. Yeah. Because it was my number one fear for years. It happened and it was so much worse than I ever imagined. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Just so much, just hilariously. And then the only couple fears I had above that happened while I was away. Right. And being back now is almost like, it's like a clarification. I'm like, oh, I really was this much happier. Mm-hmm. I really, it really was that miserable. I really right. went from an eight to a minus 50. Mm-hmm. And that, that possibility being there and my, you know, every day is my visa ticking down and anything could go wrong. Right. So, so that's always there. But every time I feel that, I tend to feel it at 2 a.m. You know? Yeah. Because um, that kind of stuff and things with my mom are the only things I really dream about. So I wake up from a little gap, I, I grab a glass of water, and that's the thing that's on my mind. Mm-hmm. Then, with all that anxiety, I wake up and I... I pop my head meds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, take your normal pills. I take my freaking normal pills. Um, that's what the mask is. Then I am a little anxious. I'm like, can I get out of the house? Is, is, is Am I, am I going to be funny or able to talk today? Am I going to yeah. do the part? I'm, I'm, I'm a big poo-poo. But I know like intellectually it always goes well and yeah. I always have a good time when we hang out or right. when I get up and, and you know, I saw the dot like, uh, Ethan's dog this morning to give him some fuss, had a good chat with Ethan. It's so freeing. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing about being back is yeah. being manually dragged out of spiraling. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the, it's choking me up. So I'm gonna have to be careful, uh, but I, I'm gonna look like the sad boys logo. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's just fucking crazy. It's yeah. really fucking crazy. I also living with the dog is so sick. Oh yeah, <laughs> running sick. He's I, so what a what a cutie pie. Jeez. I mean, uh, it's gonna take time to like feel the security of the because I mean, you know, it's not until you've been in a place for like longer than you've yeah. been where you can be like, oh, this the worst scenario can't happen because it's we're, we're a day past the like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the four to six month stay, you know what I mean? And it's just like, yeah, I don't know. There's just something so, uh, uh, even when I've had, I'm being a bit of an indoor kid and I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm frustrated with not getting things done or I'm behind on things and stuff like that. It's just so, even the possibility of going and seeing people or, or doing something after years of true, true, Isolation. Then I got, you know, I got a call this morning. I didn't really sleep. And then I got a call this morning that sucked. Oh. <laughs> I just got a, just a call. Sorry. My mum was like not doing well. And oh. that's just always a knockoff. She'll be okay. Yeah. Um, but the, that was just a weird way to wake up. For sure. And then coming and doing the show now, I'm just like, oh, I'm just comfortable again. That's so... Yeah. 
uh, it's it's like uh, it's like Nyquil. Yeah, it's like man, my throat hurts. I feel like shit. I got a headache, and then no, that yeah, yeah, I feel better. I'm a little tired, but I feel better. Oh, right, I know. Thank you for asking. All no, right. I mean, I think that that's like to use the Nyquil metaphor. It's like there is you know, it takes a long time to get over the sickness, but you can like medicate and you can do the things that like help you, you know, stay on the mend for as long as for, uh, to like shorten that recovery time. And I think you're doing those things. Like you're investing in your space, you're seeing people, you know, dress for the job you want kind of thing. Like I get anxious about the furnishing and the expense of that and things, but then every time, you know, I didn't have a bed frame. So what's the point of buying a fucking bed frame? It's going to be gone in a minute. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up doing it and I ended up building it. And now I'm 1% less anxious about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Ethan finished the living room effectively a few days ago. And now I'm 5% less concerned about it. And I think yeah. I just need to keep doing that. I need to. It's like the Dark Souls boss. You've got to like keep chipping away. i got to keep grinding it out. I've got to generate some souls, upgrade my res- resilience. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. drinking your coffee. Yeah. Uh, it's cold now, so you're good. Uh yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm getting there. I, uh, stuff like this especially feels like very concrete where it's like, okay, this is a, this kind of setup and consistency is a dream we've had for a long time and getting that rolling is, you know, it's literally f- physically tying, right? right? This is the, we're going to be sat on a couch doing this a lot and that's comforting. Yeah, no, um, Better, better every day. Every, yeah, every every frame of painting, every frame of painting, smarter every day. <laughs> uh, how are you, man? What's the skinny? Um, I'm good. I I think don't that, fucking cry. <laughs> I have this problem where there's just so many things going on that I like, <laughs> like it's just overwhelming. And I do stuff like things are getting done, but there's things like um like I'm doing a bunch of refurnishing of my apartment. Like because when I moved in, I just had all the stuff from my apartment. And uh, things just went in places and I didn't give much thought to that. And I didn't give much thought to like making the space like my own. It was also mid pandemic. So you weren't setting it up for socializing or having yeah. people around or prioritizing. Yeah. And just that. like, and it's like, I'm basically I'm getting like a lot of things are improving in my life that had been really rough the past couple of years and like socializing and like sort of yeah. like the feeling of isolation and you know, even uh, motivation with work and stuff. But there's obviously like a lot that I'm still I'm um, still working on. Got therapy after this. Um, you still still doing that? They haven't fixed you yet. Yeah, I know. It's you know lazy. Eh, well, <laughs> in due time, um, I'm um, the. I've been getting like unreasonably annoyed at a lot of things, <laughs> and it's like like completely like tanks my mood sometimes and it's the worst but uh i'm also starting like a new treatment next week for depression stuff cool. without going into like any specifics but i'm optimistic about that but oh great also oh we touched on that i think i think you yeah. mentioned it to me also like it's, it's been, a medication to not be such a big baby yeah it's my normal pills yeah <laughs> i've been um I've been exercising and working out a lot um, because I'm, you know, yeah, we announced the creator clash. So I'm fighting a fight. I'm boxing. Uh, Dude, I've been wanting to tell people for 75 days, six months or whatever. Because before I got the place here, I was was staying with you for like six weeks, seven weeks. And I got to witness kind of firsthand the six days a week yeah and they were all morning at the time yeah so i would i would you know not get up mad late i get up at like 9 30 or yeah, 10 yeah, yeah. and uh like hey what's going on and you be boxing or yeah. just or, or just got back and no literally yeah i remember how long have you been training no. um i mean okay so it's technically been since like july but it it started pretty light you know what i mean mm-hmm. um started pretty light here and there like a couple of days a week and then like it's gotten up to like five days a week now like boxing and then like you know theoretically more than that um doing other stuff like at home like i've been running a lot recently um and that's been that's been really good but it's kind of like i'm doing like two a days a little bit where i'm uh doing a run or something at home and then i'm going in and boxing do you feel, I mean, and then I'm would, sparring a lot as well. I would assume it has, but like, has the exercise in general been really good for your mental state? I would say so. Um, it's also like tiring. 
I think that for the first while, I just wanted to sleep. I remember the first time, <laughs> the first like boxing session, I just went home and like I took a nap. And I, and I don't, thank God, I don't feel like that all the time anymore because I would never get anything done. But I am still tired a lot. And um, that sucks. But I've tried to fiddle with my schedule. So a lot of the week now I'm boxing in the evenings, which has its own challenges, like me not wanting to get out of bed or get off the couch or whatever and go in. But it is better for like my productivity during the day because going into boxing at like, also the gym opens at like 9.30, which is a little bit later than I would want to be doing it. So like by the time I get home, it's like lunchtime and I feel like I've lost some productivity hours mm -hmm. and stuff. So- well, we talked about it, your preferences kind of 10 a.m. to early afternoon workspace time. Yeah, yeah, that's like, I feel like if I could choose and just like the schedules don't work out for like the gym or like my coach and stuff, but I would prefer to get up at like seven or something like that and mm -hmm. do boxing then and then finish and have a day. Um, but my closest alternative is doing what I'm doing now, which is like the evenings. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been it's been really rewarding uh, it's been definitely tough. I'm, I, I think I'm like not the best per, like creator to be doing this. Cause I, I don't think I'm going to turn most of my content into anything about the event. I think oh, I'm mostly right, just like, okay. I'm mostly doing it for personal reasons. Um, just to like prove that I can. And also I was not in a really great, I, I was, you know, in a pretty rough rut, um, and I think I have been for the past couple of years, but I was, I, I want, I agreed to do it cause I wanted to like shake myself out of something, mm. um, and just give myself something like crazy to do to like, um, just, I don't know, feel a sense of accomplishment, try something new, maybe shake up my routines and stuff. I'll have to get, I had to get new routines, had to change my diet, have to like reprioritize a lot of things. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for almost everything. Uh, I've, but one one challenge has definitely been like body image stuff. And like I haven't been eating as well as I'm supposed to. And that's been tough because I put on all this weight during the pandemic because I was just like playing RuneScape and eating like Dave's hot chicken all the time. And uh, I haven't like- A type of Zen state. In yeah, its own it way. is a Zen yeah. state in its own right. But- it is a sort of, uh, I had like lost a bunch of weight in my early twenties and I had kept the weight off for years and I had this big fear and this is like rooted in, you know, like self fat phobia, mm -hmm. you know, but also like, uh, not feeling like I am myself and stuff. So, so where like my big fear, once I like lost all this weight and it, you know, it was going from, you know, technically obese to just like a normal weight, even though I don't think BMI is like, I think BMI is really problematic and doesn't account for a ton of things. So it's not like use, it's not like really something I should be basing anything on, but at that point in my life, I was. Well, it's, it's something that's measurable at all. So yeah, you can exactly. Tell so I like, I lost all this weight and I felt good in my body and I got this like surgery for my chest and stuff because I had some stuff going on going on there with some like tissue, hard tissue stuff. And I, I felt, so I got a boob job and then I felt good, um, in my body. And then, then like pandemic stuff happened. And I think one of my biggest fears was having that stuff like revert to back the way it was before mm -hmm. I started like getting healthier. And, um, well, I think part of the worry of that, right. Especially when you're isolated and become, and everybody's more self-conscious is, reverting in any direction exactly you feel yeah like you've lost it could be physical could be emotional but just feeling like you've lost the progress that you put in over x amount of time oh exactly and you remember how much work it was exactly and so that's kind of how i how i felt um and i think that one thing about the last couple years is is the last year especially is i've become a lot more comfortable in my own skin regardless of um like my body weight and th stuff like that. Um, and that's good. And that's a, like a, definitely a good thing to carry with me. I do still like want to, 
I still have goals like body goals, I guess, because I like know where I feel the most comfortable. Um, and I know how I feel in my clothes and how, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like there's yeah. just like stuff and I, I don't want to invalidate anyone's journey or hopefully I'm not like purporting any sort of toxic, um, sort of like body ideals or anything like that, but everyone's journey is personal. And I think I've, I've gained a lot more acceptance of myself, um, which has been really, really healthy. And I, I think I've become a lot more active, which has been helpful for, for my mental health. You should Um, be extremely proud. Yeah. Mike, Mike Bunt. Hey. (laughs) Is that fun to edit? Yeah. (laughs) Bonk. But it's been good. I think my whole vibe is I don't, I've never been like a big showboaty type. And so the whole thing with like the, you know, beefing with your opponent and stuff like that is mm-hmm. not really my my style. And so my opponent will like tweet that they're going to obliterate me. And then I'm like, cool, sounds good. I'll see you there. Like, I think, you, no, I don't yeah, reckon. I mean, honestly. I'm working really hard to make sure not. Yeah, I think my thing is like, I would rather surprise people than over promise and under deliver. Sure. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to do my best and then see. So also- fun in its own way right to be a little safe self-effacing and oh for sure it's definitely more my speed yeah Yeah. um and so i i think that it's it's, fun contrast too yeah aaron to be going out and you yeah it's It's gotten it's got but i mean aaron's like been nothing but polite like you know in general and like obviously it's just like for fun and for a show and stuff but he better win because it's the second time at it so yeah that's right Last time he fought Harley, he was like much bigger than he he is. So like I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. So I fight kudos, Michael Reeves. kudos to him. Yeah, <laughs> kudos to him for um, for putting himself out there. But he's got a year of training on me. So yeah. uh, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing what I can with what I can. You're the biggest organizer. Yeah, you are jacked now, which is tight. <laughs> I am. Yeah, we'll see. I I I feel. I think what's really ex- been exciting to me lately, if I can do a little geek out about a fitness thing is I got a heart rate monitor Mm. for, you know, like you can have an Apple watch and stuff and do heart rate, but I can't do that while I'm boxing because I have like wraps and stuff that go over it. So I got a heart rate monitor for my chest that I just like strap and, um, and I have an app and stuff like that. And (laughs) it's funny that for a second I was like, well, I guess you can do that on your heart. Yeah. (laughs) You, while boxing, you, you yeah. So it's just a little fabric strap that goes around your chest and there's like a little piece that's got the technology in it. The nice thing about it is that I realized that I over exert my body and then it causes me to gas out more quickly. Mm -hmm. And so being aware of that, I can like build my um, endurance easier. So I got it for running so that I can keep my heart rate at a certain level. Um, and, And that allows me to run for longer, but also allows me to like expand my aerobic base and like increase my endurance ultimately. And that's the goal. So that's, a, that's similar to how like BMI is a toxic thing to measure mm-hmm. as, as is weight, as is, you know, outside the practical reasons for catching weight in the case of athletics, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You, you do have to have a weight goal. It's nice to have a healthy measurable yeah. stat to look yeah, at. Yeah. Literally it's work. just like, is if you overwork your heart, you're just like going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, um, it's just like bad for you. You yeah. know what I mean? To like bad for Aaron to kill you. Well, you know, when people are like, um, Oh, when I exercise my like heart rate goes up really high, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, we'll slow down. Like don't overdo it. Cause that's like the message to, to myself. It's like, I, now have a metric that tells me that I'm trying to go too hard. I'm getting ahead of myself and I need to just like slow it down and sort of accept the fact that I can't handle, you know, running at this speed that used to be my comfortable running speed back when I used to run more regularly. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've got to get my heart ready for that again. I've got to get my body ready for that again. And it's, it's a, it's progress. But I think that the nice thing is that I used to, like I used to run a lot more. Um, So if I ever get into the aerobic shape that I was in back then, then I'll be much better at managing that and like building on that Mm. Um, and Uh, doing so in a healthy way and not straining my body. Maybe uh, he's doing the show soon. Maybe we can talk about it then. Eddie has ran every single day for a couple of years Yeah, with no exception. Yeah. When he is, he's had like the flu and he's gone for a short run. Flu game. 
every major holiday yeah. same days he like flies for six hours yeah it is, it's really it's really impressive his commitment to it's it it's just such a it's like uh it's like a religious doctrine man. yeah it's yeah, wild. yeah. It's like i mean me and gaming out i remember like yeah it's just like whenever we're hanging out or like he would call me about something and then he's like all right i gotta go run and i'm like mm-hmm. yeah you do every day prayers <laughs> yeah he's like i gotta go run and then i'm gonna eat or something and i was like yeah awesome and i i aspire to be on that um i was running um i ran for an hour yesterday which is insane but it was broken up into two like 30 minute things at mm-hmm. opposite ends of the day uh do you have a cycle you have a ride a bike kind of stuff um i have ridden a bike in the past i had a bike in san francisco yeah used to commute with it but i sold it when i moved down here i uh about to get mine because same i it used to san francisco yeah buy it we uh i'm getting mine fixed up right now because it was just sitting in storage for so long if you do nab one there's a bunch of really nice bike spots mm. i mean across the northeast side east side mid city yeah arts cool. district too oh nice we should go uh go up the park go nuts yeah that sounds fun put put some lav mics on try hey, doing the podcast hey, hey, hey. As, as bike boys going uphill and mountain bikes yeah who will uh, die first that is a thing with uh with running is like the conversation test like you're supposed to run at a pace where you can have a conversation and mm. i'm like no shot <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. what are you talking about it's uh yeah you're supposed to bike at a speed where you can do a podcast yeah that's what that's what i heard it's uh joe, joe rogan does it while doing jujitsu <laughs> um but overall that's how i've been um there's a lot of stuff that's like sort of rough around the edges right now but overall we're trending in a good direction mm. uh w- w- you're gonna keep up uh i mean obviously not six days a week mm-hmm. boxing hours a day but like post match is there a a parts of this year, uh, running obviously. I definitely want to keep running because I used to run and I've always wanted to be a person who runs mm-hmm. so a fa- coward yeah like for yeah running from things is primarily <laughs> the exercise that I want um I I do like the idea of boxing for exercise I do not think I will fight again after this just because I don't want that much head trauma I'm like I think I can spare I think I can spare getting knocked around uh this once sure. but afterward you can't do computer science anymore that's gone yeah exactly so if we just stop here yeah i i don't think i'm gonna jake paul myself you uh, know yeah make great content yeah become the best businessman in the land yeah what's wrong um, with I'm, I'm more of a logan oh yeah i cheat yeah <laughs> and steal i cheat and steal allegedly but allegedly he did. yeah um you hire criminals that is <laughs> crazy to me that logan paul like he outed that one guy that worked with him uh-huh. as as a um, felon who, uh, who like did a crime like 20 years in the past and then had it expunged from the record. So no one knows how Logan found out that he was <laughs> like it was so like like it's not something that you can just look up. So he must have paid like a private investigator or something. Yeah, especially since he was like uh, he's like Coffeezilla. You didn't know this. And I'm like, well, that's just. I don't know whether or not Coffeezilla discovered that, but that's ethical journalism. Yeah. Because it's like, well, you're allowed to be a criminal and then not do more crime. Yeah, it's do the crime, do the he's time. He's as much a criminal as you are. Yeah. Though, he's done the same number of public crimes. Yeah, like literally, it's such a weird, it was such a weird thing because the whole worldview of that, and I understand Logan Paul has since apologized and said that, you know, he was kind of in the, the sort of heat of the competition and the, I don't know how he described it, but whatever, the fact that like his brain went former criminal equals untrustworthy and yeah. bad is like everything that's wrong with like the American cars world system. Right. Yeah. It's like meant to, it's been meant to rehabilitate people, or at least that's the hope. And, uh, it's like, it's like denying somewhat somebody the chance at that rehabilitation is like dragging, um, the, the like literally something that like the statute of limitations is like, you know, out on shout outs, dude. I mean, at least the designs for that, for crypto zoo were really cool oh yeah the really best fun. not <laughs> the, at all the i loved the disturbing. some of them the scariest things i've ever <laughs> seen in my life um what if a spider had a face and a job or whatever? <laughs> and and it, was, it was an elephant as well human teeth <laughs> yeah literally 
Um, we paid we paid somebody to to Photoshop the most horrific things <laughs> that a human mind can imagine. It was like a parody. It's like look at all this trashy NFT art. Why would somebody buy this? And you're like, oh, you want to see trashy? Yeah. What if a dog also was like a bird? It is also funny with the now. The wings are in its eyes. <laughs> In retrospect, the, the the phrase "I love the art" in response to NFTs Crazy. is is almost like a dog whistle for like you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, nigga, fuck Keemstar. <laughs> oh, sick of this. Oh shit, you do not get to do a face turn and it be like some lipstick performative bullshit. You're like trans rights, thumbs up. Yeah, and say nothing else. I don't know what the deal was with that. I it's. I don't even have anything Team else Star, to say. Keemstar, hero of the new. Dude. <sighs> yeah, he, I mean, he just sucks in general. Like, I feel like it's a well documented. Just sucks. And this is maybe the most annoying. He's like been out. I'm not interested in his thing. And, you know, once somebody reaches a huge number of, once somebody's cultivated like a huge number of followings but gets no engagement on social media, I'm always like, it's, <laughs> your fate has already done it. Yeah, damage yeah, enough. Yeah, I don't yeah. need to spend it's time. It's like we're money. all ignoring you, actively ignoring you. It's like, I'm going to retire and give drama to someone else and no one wanted it. <laughs> so I Literally why? Around. Yeah. Like, I'm not here to bully that. I just, it devalues people willing to rehabilitate or grow. Mm -hmm. when you use like the aesthetics of rehabilitation oh right like it's a but image. it's a prank bro yeah it's it's it, he's like reset his brand and and did like a co-stream with caffles and and you know not, nothing against caffles it just just that is part of the thing that got him this this face turn he's trying to do mm. i'm just like triple h you don't get to make a face turn mm. after all these years what you did to Shawn Michaels? Because it's not it's not earnest, is what you're getting at. Not at all. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I I like haven't I like only know some of the superficial elements, so I don't like really know what's going on. In the, well, behind you the know, scenes. emphasis on superficial. That is like the the approach. I, I yeah. only wanted to mention it in contrast because I'm not a uh, easy. I, I, I don't, I'm not going easy on uh, people with large platforms or influence. Right, and you right, do right. have to do more than just be like. It's the equivalent of J.K. Rowling being like, oh, my name's fucking black, dude. Stop shouting at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sorry yeah. I called that guy like Negro Lee Bolt Chain. <laughs> yeah. So before we wrap up today, I wanted to show you something funny that I found. Uh, something that I'm kind of obsessed with um, in, in a small way. And it's related to AI. And specifically, it's re it, it combines... Um, some of the things we've heard about in, on the internet about, you know, the text to, you know, like an AI generating a story, mm -hmm. um, but also some of the like vocal um, AI, like, v like audio deep faking technology where you can like, I don't know if you've seen it on some people's like Twitch alerts, they'll it'll be like, Hey, it's critical. Thanks mm. for subscribing or whatever. Like, um, My, I'm deep in the Goku giving you positive feedback. TikTok loop. Right. Right. Now. Right. Right. Exactly. Hey, it's me. Don't give up when you don't see improvement right away. Yeah. Right. So th that, I think it, it's the best use I think of this type of technology <laughs> that could very easily be used for evil sure. and it has, and will continue to be used for evil. But this is like a harmless thing that brings me joy, <laughs> which is the meme of Eminem doing things AI oh, version. Dude, yeah, no, the the like the YouTube videos where it's where like it's, Eminem Eminem buys a used car. Yeah, did I send you one that was uh, Eminem as a second century warlord? <laughs> oh, I have that one actually queued up. Have you watched it? <laughs> yeah, dude, that was so good. Because there 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 has been a like growing continuity of the lore. Hey, okay, this one's called Own a Musket for Home Defense. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, without the progress of technology, we would never get to hear Eminem say tally ho lads. Tally ho lads, rap scallions as well. What a time to be alive. Um, and then Eminem buys a car. Is, oh wait, Eminem goes out to buy milk is iconic. So there I was, clown this girl and I realized 
Shit, almost over the milk, then the west. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was milk. <laughs> anyway, that was just a weird, a weird aside. I do think that the musket for home defense one is perfect. I, I like. I think we should have it as literally like the closing track. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, why so? One time. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that about wraps it up for me, at least. I got to go to therapy. Uh, can I come? I've got feedback. <laughs> For who? <laughs> uh, well, first of Which all, party? therapist. Hurry up, mate. Hurry up. We're yeah, waiting long you're enough. You're not doing it fast enough. Make a little enough. progress. Um, I do. I want to give a shout out. Actually, pen pals, writing segment. Yeah, we'll get to it today. But we 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 tend to. What I want to give is a little call to action to the pen pals, folks. If anybody has a weird, awkward interaction, that's going to be my pitch this mm. week. If you have any cringy awkward interactions send those in because i yeah. think we can all relate to social anxiety and i think it's a fun way to maybe play around a little bit uh, i mean i through. i eat in my car instead of this is where i'm safe and no one can see me oh i mean no, no please leave a comment <laughs> yeah thumbs Am up I or weird? thumbs down yeah let me know or that guy you know the, the emoji is like this side we're kind of like mm, oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah you can also leave that if you're undecided on if that's okay what jarvis did right uh but yeah reach out sadboyspod at gmail.com true that's it <laughs> yeah um also look out for more stuff from us we're trying to do more things and we're enlisting the help of other human beings to help us do the things so mm -hmm. thanks to jacob for producing this episode well we end every episode of sad boys with a particular phrase we love you and we're sorry boom boom <laughs>